Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we have a hardware packed episode featuring an 8K Apple VR headset, updates to the DECA gear, and the new Magic Leap headset. We're also going to be going over all the new game updates, including a new exclusive title for PlayStation VR. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into this. So let's start things off with some quick updates. The Quest version of the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners recently received the trial update. So finally, each version of this game, Quest, PSVR and PCVR have matching content, so that means the developers can start working on something new. During a recent interview, developers Skydance Interactive let us know that we should be hearing about new content in the near future. Now if you had your hopes set on multiplayer or a co-op mode, well, it doesn't look like that's what we're getting. But we should expect an announcement for either a new gameplay mode similar to the trial, or some new storyline DLC. I'm hoping for some new storyline content, but you guys let me know in the comments what you want. Now another unexpected update was official Cyber Shoes support for Doom 3 Quest. If you're someone who hasn't gone out to side quest and install Doom 3 Quest just yet, you absolutely should. If you still need a copy of Doom 3, Newegg is selling the game for $1.49, but that sale does end today so you better hurry up and get there. And if you were unable to play Doom 3 on your Oculus Quest due to motion sickness and that high movement speed, the Cyber Shoes are your remedy. I'm just impressed to see modders and third-party hardware companies working together to enhance non-official applications. But let's jump over to some official game news. The Steam Game Fest Festival is currently running until February 9th, and it includes hundreds of free demos to play. Many of these demos are in fact VR games, and Steam gave us a spotlight list including Battle Blocks, a competitive puzzle game, Rhythm of the Universe Ionia, a music-inspired adventure game, Operation Armstrong, an asymmetrical VR stealth party game, Blunt Force, a time-jumping single-player World War II shooter, and finally Desolatium, a psychological thriller. Now these are just the games that Steam decided to highlight in their video, but I know for a fact there are more VR demos coming, such as the game I've previously livestreamed for you guys, Sword Reverie. So it looks like I'll need to put together a new list of top upcoming VR titles. Okay, so let's move into some official releases, starting with Stride on the PlayStation VR. We just recently received confirmation from Joyway that this game will be coming soon to the PlayStation VR. The release will include all gameplay modes currently available on the PC VR version, including the Endless Mode, the Time Run Mode, and the Arena Mode. If you're not familiar with this title, it's usually described as Mirror's Edge in VR. You parkour from rooftop to rooftop and occasionally have to shoot down some enemies. Once you get into a nice rhythm, the mechanics of this game feel excellent. Now, Stride coming to the PlayStation VR might not be a huge surprise, but what did catch me off guard was an announcement trailer for a new PlayStation VR exclusive title. Winds and Leaves is a relaxing world-building title with graphics similar to Paper Beast or Journey of the Gods. So you'll get to sit back and build the world of your dreams when this title releases in spring of 2021. Okay guys, we have one more PlayStation VR story before we jump into that juicy hardware information. A recently published patent shows that Sony wants to introduce a spectator mode for VR. This allows for asymmetrical functionality, meaning people can actively participate in the VR experience. The patent shows a group of people sitting back on the couch and basically trolling the VR gamer by selecting his in-game weapon as a soup ladle. Now you would most likely be interfacing with the game via your cell phone, and as cool as this sounds, we've already seen it before in some PC VR titles. Games like Rikyo's Fragments and Akron Attack of the Squirrels already feature this type of asymmetrical play. But this definitely would be a welcome addition to some PSVR titles. Okay everybody, it's hardware time, starting with a quick update to the Tundra Trackers. If you're not familiar with the Tundra Trackers, they are an upcoming, cheaper and sleeker solution to the Vive Full Body Trackers. Their Kickstarter was supposed to begin last month in January, but has now been delayed to March. They are currently suffering from that same supply shortage that basically every other company around the world is seeing. So next month you can join the Kickstarter and Tundra Trackers are expected to start shipping in July. Just a quick FYI, if you already have Vive Trackers, they will work side by side with the Tundra Trackers. Okay, so next up, we have a new AR headset coming from Magic Leap. Now, the original headset was a bit of a disappointment to say the least. The company's new CEO, Peggy Johnson, recently spoke at the Future Investment Initiative and gave us a tiny bit of information regarding their upcoming AR headset. 
It's slated to be available in early access for the fourth quarter of this year. It will be 50% smaller, 20% lighter, and come with a 100% greater field of view. Now the field of view on the original Magic Leap was one of the biggest issues, coming in at only 50 degrees. And while a 100% increase sounds like the field of view would be 100 degrees, I don't think that's exactly what we're going to see. You can't fit a large field of view in such a small device. That's the whole reason why the large FOV Pimax headsets are absolutely tremendous. AR has been taking its sweet time to break into the market, mainly due to these technical limitations. Speaking of new hardware breaking into the market, we finally got an update on the DECA gear. Quick recap, the DECA gear was a PC VR headset that really caught us by surprise near the end of 2020. It features a ton of amazing specs at an unbelievable price tag. Just to quickly recap, those amazing specs included 4K resolution panels that match the HP Reverb G2, controllers with built-in finger tracks, Tracking, a hip-based locomotion system, camera facial tracking, and built-in wireless PC VR game streaming, all for under $500. So here are their updates, starting with the release window. The overly ambitious estimated release date of May is just not happening. Prototype units for content creators such as myself are obviously also delayed. Now, one of the obvious reasons for the delay is again that hardware shortage supply we spoke of earlier, and there's a single component holding back the project. They're expecting to give us an updated release window next month. From a software standpoint, the DECA Gear team is currently working to perfect their tracking solution. They were forced to develop their own tracking solution because licensing one of the existing systems would not fit within that $500 price tag. This is my biggest concern for the project. For years, Microsoft has already failed to deliver on a highly accurate camera-based tracking solution, and let's not forget how bad the HTC Cosmos failed in this regard. But fingers crossed that DECA Gear can pull it off. Now the controller-based finger tracking will work out of the box for Steam VR. So if a game currently has Valve Index controller support, the DECA Gear controllers will also work. With regards to the camera-based facial tracking and the hip locomotion system, DECA Gear is trying to release that SDK to developers as soon as possible. So that was your update for the DECA Gear, and I still remain cautiously optimistic for this product. Now for the next product, I just don't know what to think. If we're to believe recent leaks and rumors, the new Apple VR headset looks to be absolutely insane. We're talking dual 8K displays, 12 cameras, a LiDAR system, and a $3,000 price tag. Now I do have to remind you, this is a standalone headset. It's said to feature Apple's brand new cutting edge M1 chip, or maybe even something more powerful. Now this is desktop level performance inside a VR headset. Now even with all that power, driving two 8K displays still is no easy task. So the Apple VR headset will feature eye tracking based foveated rendering. So the area on the screen that you are looking at will be rendered at a higher resolution. And as you move further out from that spot, the resolution will decrease. The LiDAR system is something we've recently seen in new iPads and the iPhone 12. This will allow you to map your 3D environment. Remember, Apple's overall focus is AR rather than VR, so we should expect this headset to feature applications we haven't seen before. Now, we still don't have any information on what type of content to expect on this headset. Apple is not known for gaming. It's very unlikely that many VR game developers will support this product, as we already know, it will be a niche and underselling device. And while the M1 chip is quite powerful, and I'm sure game developers could do amazing things with it, it does still lag behind traditional PC VR hardware. But at the same time, it would be a huge leap from the Quest 2's XR2 chipset. I would absolutely love to get my hands on this product, but unless I get a lot more information, there's absolutely no chance I can stomach a $3,000 price tag. My focus is of course on gaming, and it doesn't look like this is going to be a gaming-centric device. But only time will tell, guys. Okay, everybody, that was today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. As always, I'll see you guys on next time.